This is the story of Air Canada Flight 680. On the 17th of September 1979, an Air Canada DC-9 was flying from Boston to Yarmouth in Nova Scotia, Canada. Flight 680 left Logan International Airport at 12.12 p.m. local time, with just 45 people on board. The flight was kind of short, so the plane didn't really have time to get up to a really high cruising altitude. So their cruising altitude for the day was set at 25,000 feet. The takeoff and much of the climb had been normal. They were expecting that to continue for the rest of the flight. As the flight was about to level off at its cruising altitude of 25,000 feet, the DC-9 was rocked by an explosive decompression. As the air was sucked out of the plane, the pilots were trying to make sense of what had just happened to their plane. The pilots immediately donned their oxygen mask and did a communication check to make sure that they were able to talk to each other. The captain immediately took control of the plane, and then he looked back and saw something that no pilot wanted to see. His cockpit door was gone, and he could see the blue sky through the back of the plane. Now, you don't have to be an airplane designer to know that you should not be able to see the sky through the back of your airplane. They knew that they had to get this plane down to a more breathable altitude as fast as possible. The pilot then got on the radio with air traffic control and said, Boston Center Air Canada 680 is doing a rapid emergency descent. Clearance back to Boston were out of 23,000 descending. Boston Air Traffic Control Center cleared the plane down to 14,000 feet and put them on a direct path back to Boston. The plane was now more or less controllable and the pilots wanted to make sure that everyone in the cabin was okay. And thankfully, they were. One cabin crew member had a slight bump on her head, but everyone was accounted for. Once the DC-9 was on its way down, the pilots were able to give the controllers more information on what had happened to the plane. They let the controller know that they had an explosive decompression. The pilots also wanted to level the plane off at 9,000 feet, but air traffic control could only give them 10,000 feet, probably due to separation reasons. Then the pilot said this, Roger, we are just leveling off now. The back end of our tail is completely blown off. No wonder this plane had an explosive decompression. Something at the back had given away, and that had caused massive problems for the pilots. But luckily, the hydraulics were not damaged, and so the pilots were able to keep the plane under control without any issues. Had the hydraulics been damaged, this would have been a lot more worse. But as expected, the plane was not in pristine shape. For example, the right-hand engine would not go past an EPR of 1.25, and the pneumatic crossfire valve was open and they could not get it to close no matter what they tried. The crew now wanted the nearest runway that they could get so that this plane could get on the ground. The runway that was closest to them was runway 33 left at Logan International Airport and that's what they were going for. At the airport they had fire trucks and other emergency vehicles waiting at the runway for the arrival of flight 680. The pilots then cautiously took the plane down to 4,000 feet Air traffic control was on the edge of their seat, hoping that no control problems would come up as the plane entered its final section of flight. Due to the kind of damaged right-hand engine and the structural stability of the plane, the pilots carefully lined the stricken jet up with the runway. They kept the plane a bit high on purpose just in case something went wrong. Since the plane was in such a precarious state, the pilots used the flaps and the landing gear to reduce altitude and speed, instead of messing with the throttles too much. Then at 12.50 p.m., the DC-9 made a safe landing on runway 33 left at Logan International Airport. Thankfully, none of the people on board were injured. These pilots had done the impossible. They had landed a badly damaged plane and saved the lives of everyone on board. Now, the only question that remained was, how did the back of a passenger jet blow out? The damage that was done to the plane was substantial, and it was a miracle that the plane made it back in one piece and that no one was sucked out alive. On the ground, they were able to see the true scale of the damage to the back of the plane. The rear portion of the fuselage had some serious damage. The aft pressure bulkhead door, the drink cart, and the rear lavatory water supply were all missing from the plane. The inspection also revealed that the vertical stabilizer and the rudder were not damaged in any way. Had they been damaged, then this incident might have ended very differently. The inspection also revealed how close the plane had come to losing its control surfaces. The investigators found that some of the control cables in the tail were loose, when they should have been taut. Had they broken, then this flight could have ended in disaster. That's the point that I'm trying to make here. 
this flight was on the edge of disaster. There were so many ways that this could have easily turned deadly, and it is absolutely miraculous that this plane landed back in one piece with everyone safe. To understand why this happened, the investigators took parts of the rear pressure bulkhead and sent it off to Washington to be studied. The rear pressure bulkhead is the bit at the end of the fuselage that seals it up. You know how people say that an airplane is basically a large aluminum can? Well, the pressure bulkhead is the dome that seals the back end of that can. Upon inspection, the investigators found a tiny 0.03 inch fatigue crack above the access door near a rivet hole. Studying the crack was riveting. They found that the crack had formed over 3,000 cycles, meaning that for the past 3,000 flights, this plane had a latent flaw. This accident had happened due to metal fatigue. What's absolutely scary is that this could have been easily prevented on the 5th of May 1979. On the 5th of May 1979, the bulkhead of the plane underwent an X-ray radiograph test. This test is specifically designed to detect metal fatigue cracks like the one that caused this accident. When they looked at the raw data from the x-rays, they could easily spot the cracks on the x-rays. But for some reason, the written report of this test made no mention of a crack in the bulkhead. But wait, it gets worse. This problem isn't limited to just one Air Canada DC-9. They found that 33 other DC-9s from multiple airlines had the very same flaw in the same place in the bulkhead. They were all of varying lengths and severities. This was in spite of inspection and quality control procedures that was in place at the time. Had those cracks gone undetected, then it is an absolute certainty that we would have lost at least one DC-9 to fatigue cracking in the bulkhead. So, what did they do? To prevent something like this from happening in the future, Air Canada and the FAA decided to double down on inspections to make sure that flaws like these were caught early. Moreover, they also overhauled the way in which maintenance was done to make sure that another crack didn't slip through the cracks. This accident, in my opinion, is absolutely fascinating. This crash should have been a disaster, but it wasn't by the skin of their teeth. Rear pressure bulkhead failures have been known to crash bigger planes, much bigger planes. Just look at China Airlines Flight 611, a 747 that broke apart over the Taiwanese Strait. That crash was 22 years in the making. What's more is that this crash probably saved lives, as had this not happened, then one of the other 33 DC-9s that had this flaw probably would have lost their pressure bulkheads, and who knows what could have happened in that instance. Also, if you care about this sort of stuff, the plane that was involved in this accident was tail number Charlie Foxtrot Tango Lima Uniform. That plane was repaired and put back into service. This plane would then be involved in the Air Canada 797 incident, where an in-flight fire would rip through the plane after it had landed, killing 16 people. I guess after this safe landing, this particular DC-9 was flying on board time. In your opinion, why do you think the crack went undetected for so long? The report says that it was very visible and very easy to spot the crack on the scans. So what do you think happened? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.